it's Kira and welcome to another vlog. I feel I'm always fairly excited to start new vlogs but never more so than when I get to say welcome to a new Rory Gilmore 24 hour readathon and it has been far 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 too long since I was last able to say that sentence so I am beyond excited for this reading vlog. Now although I feel like the title Rory Gilmore 24 hour readathon is fairly self-explanatory, for anyone who hasn't come across one of my Rory Gilmore readathons before, they are a readathon that I do in collaboration with one of my amazing friends Carolyn, her channel is Carolyn Marie Reads, and amongst all of the wonderful things that make us such great friends, one of the main things is our shared passion for Gilmore Girls. We love Rory Gilmore and we also love Jess, we're team Jess over here so I thought it's best to put that out there right at the beginning of this vlog so that we're all on the same page and because we both clearly love reading having channels that are predominantly dedicated to books and we love Rory Gilmore who is one of the most well-read fictional protagonists out there don't come for me if you know of a different protagonist who's read more but Rory is undeniably very 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 well read and that means that she has an extensive list of books that are mentioned throughout the entirety of the Gilmore Girls series leaving us with a massive Rory Gilmore reading list of over 300 books that are mentioned throughout the entirety of the show which is just wild so although I'm certainly not going to be taking all of those books off in this 24 hour period Carolyn and I like to host these Rory Gilmore readathons to create a cosy Stars Hollow vibe, do lots of reading and hopefully make our way through that massive list of the Rory Gilmore reading list because I think it could take me my entire lifetime so I might as well start now. This is the third Rory Gilmore readathon that we've done and I'm so excited because like I said it's been far too long since the last one. Now over the next 24 hours I'm going to be doing as much reading as possible, I'm probably going to drink an unholy amount of coffee, eat some good food, watch some Gilmore Girls and just try and transport myself into the world of Stars Hollow because honestly what better place could there be to transport myself to for the next 24 hours. It is currently just before 5pm on Friday the 10th of September and I feel like that beginning of autumn time is just the perfect time to throw myself into all things Gilmore Girls because regardless of where the episodes are taking place in the year I feel like every single episode of Gilmore Girls just has an autumnal cosy vibe to it and I just feel like this show and autumn are just a match made in heaven. So it's currently just before 5pm like I said and I'm going to be starting my 24 hour readathon at 5pm exactly and then reading as much as I can until 5pm tomorrow on Saturday the 11th of September. Now of course who knows how much I'm going to end up reading. I haven't planned out an entire list of books. I'm just going to kind of see what I feel as I go. But I do know that the very first book that I'm going to be picking up is The Kite Runner. That is upside down and back to front. The Kite Runner by Carla Tosini. What a terrible introduction to this book. But I have been meaning to read this book for a very long time now. This is probably, I'd say, Carla Tosini's most well-known novel. I haven't read it yet, hence why I'm picking it up right now. But I have read his other novel or one of his other novels, A Thousand Splendid Sons, and it was incredible. He is such a talented author and this one has been on my radar for a really long time now but I just haven't gotten around to it so now seems like the perfect opportunity to tick this one off my TBR and also get started on my quest to complete the Rory Gilmore reading list. So without further ado I think I'm gonna kick off the readathon by making myself a cup of coffee and then get on with some reading so I'll catch up with you when I have started to emotionally destroy myself with this novel because that's just inevitable. <laughs>
Okay, so it is now just after 6 p.m., so just over an hour into the readathon, and I am now 56 pages into the Kite Runner. As predicted, I am just absolutely enamoured by this book so far. Khaled Hosseini just has such a descriptive way of writing, and knowing how he kind of sets you up for emotional turmoil, although I'm only 56 pages in, I'm already feeling kind of anxious, like I can feel my stomach like tensing a little bit for fear of what is going to happen. He also kind of gives you little hints and tells certain bits of the story from the future point of view and hints at things that have previously happened and then goes back into the past, in this case into the main character's childhood and just starts setting you up for complete and utter emotional destruction. So I don't know what's going to happen yet but based on my experience of reading A Thousand Splendid Sons and of reviews I've seen of this novel, I can only assume it's not going to be good. But writing style wise, very, very good. And I do think that although I'm nervous about how upsetting this book might be, it is also so indicative and just like testament to how good of an author Khaled Hosseini is because he creates characters that you truly become invested in and that you really, really care about. And regardless of whether that is making you love the characters or feel devastated for them, I just think an author that can make you truly invest in the characters that they've written is just undeniably amazing. So I haven't got massive amounts to say other than just that I'm loving it so far, but just to give a brief overview for anyone that isn't like familiar with what this novel is all about, it is set in Afghanistan and predominantly, at least until this point, is taking place in the 70s as the monarchy was overthrown and then a republic was brought into place. So it's a time of a lot of like shift and turmoil and change for the people of Afghanistan. Um, and our main character is Amir. He is a wealthy young boy who lives with his dad. His mum died in childbirth and they also have um, two servants living with them who are also a father and son. The dad of the father and son grew up with Amir's dad and then the little boy Hassan was born in the same year as Amir and they kind of grew up together as well having both lost their mothers in infancy. So they're kind of very very much connected but they don't consider each other necessarily well. Amir doesn't necessarily consider Hassan a friend because he has kind of a bit of a superiority of, above him in his social status but regardless of that they have a really strong connection and are kind of, you know, growing up almost like brothers, aside from just that societal divide. But they live together, they spend a lot of time together, and that is kind of where I'm assuming we're being set up for emotional destruction, because we're hinting, being told this was like from um, Amir's perspective, that something bad is going to happen to Hassan. We obviously don't know what yet. And of course, so much terrible things could happen in a time of like political turmoil and of overthrowing a government. And, you know, a lot of things are happening like religiously and a persecution of minority, minority groups which Hassan and his dad fall into and so there's just a lot going on and it's very very intense and um, Khaled Hosseini brings like politics to life in a very very engaging way and of course given some of the things that are happening in the world right now it feels very apt to be picking this book up at this time because obviously certainly a relevant conversation to be had given what is going on in this part of the world right now but Reading aside, this is the Gilmore Girls readathon, and for the Gilmore Girls, what is more important than books? Food, that is what. So, this readathon, I'm giving equal priority to food and reading. And so, again, in true Gilmore Girls fashion, wouldn't be right to make my own dinner because we know Rory and Lorelai wouldn't do that. So, instead, we're actually going out for dinner. Um, we sadly do not have a Luke's here in York, though I wish we did. But the next best thing is we're going out for burgers. I'm obviously going to be getting a vegan burger and some chips maybe a milkshake, I might just push the boat out and go crazy. But yeah, we're gonna go out for dinner and then when I get back, I will of course be getting right back into this book and, you know, seeing what turmoil lies ahead. Seeing as this is all about Gilmore Girls, I felt like I kind of had to go all out for Friday night dinner. So we went out for burgers, like I mentioned, and then we went somewhere else for dessert where I got the most amazing plate of hot vegan brownies with some ice cream. It was just amazing, absolutely. 10 out of 10. Can't compare it to an actual Luke's experience, but 
I'm fairly confident it was on par with the delight that would have been dinner at Luke's. But now that I'm back, it is nearly, well, it's, it's half past nine in the evening. I'm saying nearly 10 o'clock. That would have been a slight exaggeration, but it is half past nine in the evening. And typically on a 24 hour readathon, I would be trying to stay up till, you know, like 11, maybe 12, but I'm actually about to go to bed. And the reason for that is because Jay starts work really, really, really early tomorrow. And um, so we want to go to the gym before he starts work, which means that we're gonna have to set like a four o'clock alarm. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go to bed earlier than I normally would, but I will also be up a lot earlier and obviously back to reading first thing in the morning. Have managed to squeeze in a couple more chapters of The Kite Runner, and I am now on chapter nine, and that is page 94 it's starting to get quite sad and already has become you know quite like it's kind of taken a transition from hinting at darkness to come to actually just going full throttle into that darkness quite graphic in some areas I'm obviously not going to give any spoilers away or go into too much detail about what happens but it is just very suddenly very brutal and it is quite difficult to read because of just how raw the experience is but paired with the fact that you care so much about the characters you obviously can't really put the book down but it is certainly difficult subject matter to read about so um definitely going to be obviously picking this one up again for first thing in the morning. But as I mentioned, I'm going to the gym first thing in the morning. I don't actually have any audiobooks downloaded for this readathon from the Rory Gilmore reading list, but I thought that what I might do in the morning is listen to an episode of the Gilmore Guys podcast whilst I'm at the gym, just to keep those Gilmore vibes flowing until I pick this book up again. And I'm sorry that I just said it like that because that was horrible, but here we are, Gilmore Girls for the win. I'm very tired right now, so I'm gonna go to sleep and then catch up with you where hopefully I'll be on the ball and ready to read first thing in the morning. guys so it is now about 6 30 a.m on saturday morning and i've just got back from the gym now on the topic of going to the gym so early we know that's not necessarily in character for rory gilmore but i'm looking at it as one of two ways for keeping it on a gilmore girls brand the first of which is that i was taking inspiration from rory's college roommate from her first year, Janet, who is the like athlete one. She's on a scholarship and she's always up super early doing crunches and jogging on the spot and annoying all of the rest of the roommates, especially Paris. So that's spot number one is that I'm pretending that I'm Janet. And then number two, suggested to me by a lovely girl called Shadi, um, who responded to my Instagram story of me practicing my handstands, was that we could call it upside down tap dancing. Um, because obviously in the Gilmore Girls, year in the life, Rory ends up battling insomnia and she decides to tap dance her way through the night to cope with that insomnia. So there we go. Not quite Gilmore Girls if you think about it, but there's a way to make it fit. There's always a way to make it fit and clearly I'm a bit delusional because it's so early. 
but regardless we're back to reading definitely up against the odds I feel like for someone who arranged this readathon and had the capacity to make this on any day that I wanted it to be I didn't do a very good job of picking it to me on a weekend where I had loads of free time so last night we obviously went out for dinner which took quite a while and this morning at 8 a.m. I actually have a haircut booked which I'm very nervous about because I've not had a haircut since last August and I'm nervous, I always get so nervous for haircuts, but regardless that means I'll have another chunk of time where I won't be able to do any reading. But I do have probably about an hour now until I need to leave the house for my haircut where I can get some more reading of the Kite Runner done. So I've got my morning cup of tea, got the Kite Runner and I'm going to do as much reading as I can before heading out to the hairdressers and I will let you know how far I get. I'm just getting ready to dash out of the house for my haircut, very scary, but I have of course done a little bit more reading of The Kite Runner and it is just such a great book, wow, 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 wow. Khaled Hosseini is a very talented man, let me say, he has written an incredible novel, I'm only halfway through, I'm on page 144 which is right about midway through this novel and I just no idea where it's going to go but I am very invested and ready to find out. I think what makes his novel so interesting, and I had this experience with A Thousand Splendid Sons as well, is that he writes protagonists who you simultaneously feel a lot of empathy for but also kind of dislike the way that they behave. So for Amir for example, he has made some very questionable decisions, things that make you feel disgusted with him, like he's lacking in all moral integrity and you just despise the things that he's done. But equally you recognise that he made some decisions out of fear and that he's also a child at the beginning of this novel and was making decisions because he wasn't fully aware of the consequences and yet you so you recognise the gravity of his situation and the fact that he was in a bad circumstance but then you also feel really disgusted by the things that he's done and I, I kind of had the similar experience in The Thousand Splendid Sons, not so much, the main character in that one, Mariam, is dealing with a lot more than Amir is at the beginning of his uh, novel and I feel like Mariam's circumstances are so much worse so although she also is like not necessarily the nicest person at times I felt a lot more empathy for her whereas with Amir it's definitely bordering that like not even moral greyness he has done some very immoral things but then you also recognise that each of those decisions have like a reason behind them however good or bad that may be and then he also weaves into the narrative obviously political unrest we have characters who are going through um, like migration we're dealing with like refugee narratives and there's just so much going on that it makes it almost impossible to view characters as good or bad because you just kind of see the complexity of their lives and their situations and I think that brings it down to what is so good about this novel is that he creates lives not just characters and you see this intricate web of complexity that is just so so interesting so heading out for my haircut now I figure that while I'm out in town I might as well bring my book with me and then I'm gonna head into a cafe maybe go to Waterstones do some reading out and about and then come home so I will catch up with you later on hopefully with a nice haircut and not a horrible one fingers crossed <laughs>
Good news all around for me, first of all starting with my hair because I'm very happy with the result of my haircut. Clearly still got a lot of length which is what I wanted, I didn't want it to be too short especially because it's been a while since my last haircut and I never like to do anything too drastic to begin with. It's better to like go a little bit at a time I think anyway. But I'm very happy with how it went. I went to a salon called David Wilson in York so if anyone is in the local area would highly recommend specifically because he is a guy who specializes in curly hair which clearly I have. But I've always really struggled first of all to find a hairdresser that is like interested in or knows about curly hair but also one that is like relevant to my type of hair because I feel like a lot of curly hair salons and also advice about how to take care of curly hair is very specific to like really tight ringlet curls which obviously have a very specific like need in terms of hair care and how you maintain those types of curls whereas obviously I've not got straight hair it is curly but it's like more like a loose wave kind of curl and some of it is more ringlety but it's certainly not like a tight curl so I found David on recommendation when I was looking for someone who specialized in kind of this type of curly hair and I'm so happy with how it went he was very like great explaining what he was doing and why it was specific to my type of hair and just in general I feel like the thing that I wanted to do was maintain the length but bring it up a little bit because you'll have probably seen in videos or even at the beginning of this vlog before the haircut the top was very straight because it was long and it was being pulled down and the bottom was a lot curlier whereas I feel like I'm not sure if you can see but it's kind of just brought the curl pattern slightly higher up and I'm very very happy with the result so that's a big win for the beginning of today. Next big win is first of all had the best time sitting in the Waterstones cafe. I was the first person through the door when it opened and I got myself a delightful oat milk chai latte and finished off the kite runner. Now of course this is a 24 hour readathon and normally in 24 hour readathons my goal is to read as much as possible in 24 hours and that means devouring books as quickly as I absolutely possibly can. But with the kite runner I didn't really want to do that because I felt like the subject matter was too important. I cared a lot about the characters and just it felt too sobering to fly through it like I was trying to binge read it. So I definitely took more time on this one than I probably typically would have done with any other book in a 24 hour readathon. But I think it was so worth it and I gave this book five stars. Five stars, don't know why I couldn't say the word five, but I gave it five stars. It was just incredible. Now can confirm not just based on A Thousand Splendid Sons but on his writing in general that Khaled Hosseini is worthy of being one of my favourite authors. His work is just incredible and so touching and just deals with the most important topics and it's just unputdownable because of how much gravity there is to the contents of his novels and yet the way that he describes you know Afghanistan as a setting being born there himself he just brings it to life in such an incredible way and explores how beautiful it is and then kind of shows how that's even more devastating kind of the way that it has ended up based on all kinds of circumstances but yeah he's just so amazing. I have to say I definitely felt a lot more empathy for Amir as a main character as we got towards the end of it but I think again Khaled Hosseini did such a great job of exploring the complexity of Amir as a character and that he wasn't all bad or all good and that he had done bad things but that he had a desire to do better and felt a lot of shame about the bad things that he had done and I think you know although most of us haven't done or experienced any of the things that Amir has been through we can all kind of empathize with that guilt from doing something that you know you maybe shouldn't have done whether that's a really big thing or a really small thing you kind of feel that sense of guilt when you've maybe put someone else in a circumstance that they shouldn't have been in and then just sort of not knowing how to right your wrong and so instead burying it beneath the surface and kind of holding on to that guilt rather than just owning up and doing the right thing and especially in childhood I think those feelings of guilt when you've maybe just even like let someone else take the blame when you've done something wrong and then you kind of hold on to that but for Romeo it was that but on a much much bigger and sort of, sort of more important scale so really relatable characters in sense of just like the moral qualms that they go through but also really big topics that are certainly difficult to read about but really important so loved this I would still say that I think A Thousand Splendid Sons is my favourite of the two that I've read from Khaled Hosseini but both absolute five star reads so so incredible I'm very very 
very highly would recommend them. Now next up, I'm gonna read a short story just to tick something else off. So on the Rory Gilmore reading list, we have The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, which is in this collection of The Lottery and Other Stories. Now, technically, The Lottery and Other Stories is on the list, but seeing as The Lottery is the only one that's mentioned, I'm just gonna read that one for now, which is literally like a teeny tiny short story. I really like Shirley Jackson and her writing style, I think it's really great, and I probably will read the other stories at some point, but for now, just to tick something else off the list, I'm gonna read The Lottery and then move on to a bigger third read. Ooh, and before I forget, the other piece of great news is that I treated myself to a donut. So I got myself from Doe in York a pumpkin spice donut, which is obviously vegan. And I mean, I just said that Autumn and Gilmore Girls go hand in hand. So when I saw that they had a vegan pumpkin spice donut, I simply had to buy it because it just looked too good. So I'm gonna save this one for a little bit later, but it smells incredible, looks amazing, and I cannot wait. So now, back to reading, but you just had to see this beauty. Okay, so it is currently quarter past two in the afternoon, so I've got just over two and a half hours left of the readathon. This last 24 hours has gone so quickly, and you know what? Bringing everything back to Gilmore Girls, as we have to do in this readathon vlog, I feel like this is the readathon equivalent of the day where Rory and Lorelai get back from their summer trip of Europe before Rory is meant to start at Yale and they think that they've got it all planned out that they're going to have so many days to get everything ready and do things before she gets to Yale and then they realise that they've got it all wrong and she actually starts the very next day and they have to do everything in 24 hours and like cut all of their plans short but they hadn't realised how much they needed to do and I feel like that is the equivalent of what's happened to me today because obviously Ended up going out for dinner, which took ages last night. It was delicious though. Obviously had a haircut today, which again, took up a good bit of time. Did quite a bit of sleeping last night and then went to the gym this morning. And I just feel like I have had lots of unforeseen plans that aren't reading. That I've done a lot less reading than I anticipated. But either way, I'm bringing it all back around to Gilmore Girls. And that is kind of the point of this 24 hours. So that's what counts. I'm still living my best at Gilmore Girls life. And that's what we're doing. So with that said, I have just done some more reading though and I started Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf as my next read. I'm on page 102 of this novel. what that noise was if you heard it but there was just such a weird noise that just came from my street okay I'm on page 102 of Mrs Dalloway and my conclusion so far so there's about 60 pages left of this novel my conclusion is that I don't like Virginia Woolf or I suppose that's a bit unfair I don't like Virginia Woolf's writing style I don't have any personal opinion on her because I've never met her but I'm not loving this book I know Virginia Woolf from studying at university I think has like a very stream of consciousness style write of writing and she doesn't have chapters um, and it's very 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 descriptive about characters to the point where I'm like over 100 pages in 
And if you asked me to give you a summary of what was going on, I'd have no idea because I feel like we've not had any plot. All we've got is just description of characters. So it starts off with the main character, Mrs. Dalloway, who is like going off to buy flowers for a party that she's having. And then it's just loads and loads of her and other characters musing on themselves, their past relationships, all of that kind of stuff. But it is not in any way interesting me whatsoever. I do love when I can get invested in a character, but I feel like an author for me to enjoy their book has to have a delicate balance of character and plot. And I think this book is massively lacking in plot, but I'm gonna persevere. I've only got 60 pages left. I'm gonna go make myself a coffee, have my donut finally, maybe watch an episode of Gilmore Girls as you saw with my lunch earlier. I'm watching season one at the moment. I decided to go back right to the start and start Gilmore Girls all over again. So I'm currently on episode two where Rory has just started at Chilton. So I'm gonna watch a bit of episode two, eat my donut, drink a coffee, and then carry on reading this book. Okay, so I finished reading Mrs. Dalloway and that is 165 pages and countless minutes of my time that I'll never get back. Hate to say it because I really wanted to like this book, but I just don't think Virginia Woolf's writing style is for me. Sad as it may be, it just wasn't tickling my fancy. I just couldn't get into it and so the whole thing just felt entirely pointless and I resented it, I won't lie, I was not a fan whatsoever, but it's done now. I rated it two stars, mostly just because I kind of felt like wrong to give Virginia Woolf that amount of stars, never mind one, but I really didn't enjoy this book in the slightest, but that's one more ticked off, so I suppose that is something, at least there is a positive to come out of that reading experience, and I've now gotten started on my... I'm going to call this my third book because obviously I did read the one short story from Shirley Jackson but I'm not counting that as a whole book because it was about 10 pages. It was a good short story though so I'll talk more about that probably at the end of the readathon. But I'm also on another collection of short stories now, this time The Snows of Kilimanjaro by Ernest Hemingway which I didn't actually realise was a short story collection until I opened the very first page. But that actually is very, very, very good because I am going to read them all, or at least that's my intention. Uh, it's currently um, 25 past three in the afternoon. So I've got, let's say, like an hour and a half left. And there is 130 five pages of this book. But I do think that when it comes to short stories, those pages go a lot quicker because the like the novels or the novellas or the short stories, whatever you want to call them, they tend to be a lot faster paced because they're only like, you know, 20 to 30 pages long altogether. So I'm definitely going to try and finish all of these. I just read the very first one, which was the one that is called The Snows of Kilimanjaro. And it was more interesting than I expected. If you'd have asked me at the beginning of today whether I thought I would prefer Virginia Woolf to Ernest Hemingway, I would have imagined that Hemingway would have been the more boring and then I would like Virginia Woolf, but actually we've got a bit of a reversal, so a fun surprise there. Um, these are all, I'm assuming, going to be quite like dark because that is the vibe I get from the blurb of this one, and Snows of Kilimanjaro kind of starts with what I'm assuming is people who are on some kind of hike or trek that has gone wrong and we have a main character who is close to death and it is kind of between his present day circumstances and then reminiscing on his past and just like his life in general. I definitely enjoyed it but I'm excited to see what all of the other ones are about as well. So with just an hour and a half to go of this readathon Jay has just gotten back from work for the day and we are going to go out for a quick walk in the park and then go and sit ourselves on Millennium Bridge and do some reading there and I think we'll probably stay there until 5 when the readathon finishes.
Okay, so it is now two minutes past five on Saturday the 11th of September and that means that the Rory Gilmore 24 hour readathon is now over for me and it has been such a lovely 24 hours as it always is when you just get to transport yourself into the world of all things Gilmore for 24 hours because I mean what could be better than that. But I finished my last book which was of course The Snows of Kilimanjaro by Ernest Hemingway sat on the bridge which was absolutely lovely at I think 4.42pm so just before the end of the readathon ideal timing and I'm really glad that I decided to go for this one as my final read because as predicted the fact that it was a collection of short stories meant that even though it is generally quite a short book it felt like it was just flying by because each of those stories was just like a nice little snippet I think the longest one was probably like 20 pages long but most of them were like just five to ten pages which meant that the stories were really really quick what I will say though is Ernest Hemingway sounds like a fun guy. He seems really cheery and I just bet he was a hoot to be around based on the contents of these stories. Um, they were pretty dark and I really liked them but they were not happy stories but I suppose that was also the beauty of them being quite short is that although they were quite dark, quite brutal and dived into some like really graphic and gruesome topics you never had to experience any one single topic for more than a few pages at a time which meant that although it was heavy material it didn't get too much because you were like onto the next thing before you knew it so yeah I don't know much about Ernest Hemingway I might be really stating the obvious that he was quite a dark guy and was dealing with some quite dark topics because I don't really know much about him and his history but yeah what a fun dude I uh I did enjoy it though, so I'm only kind of joking. It was an enjoyable read and having now experienced some of his short stories, I would absolutely hope to read some of his full length novels in the future because I liked the writing style. It was quick and easy to get through and I felt like it was just an enjoyable reading experience. So that brought my Rory Gilmore readathon to an end and I had dived into four texts, not four complete books because I only read one short story by Shirley Jackson, but obviously we started off with The Kite Runner, the highlight of this readathon by, by, by far, it was just so great, completely lost my word there because of how good this book was. Then we read The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, one short story, it was about 10 pages long and again, oddly very dark. People who write short stories I think have a lot to get off their chest because they tend to be just like really intense and brutal and just like out of nowhere just dive into something really horrific and then it's over. But again an enjoyable short story nonetheless. Then the low light of the readathon was obviously Mrs Dalloway which obviously is a well-loved classic just not for me so don't let me put you off of it it just wasn't quite the style that I was hoping for couldn't mesh with the writing style but that doesn't mean that you go and enjoy it because lots and lots and lots of people do in fact I know that Carolyn who I'm hosting this readathon with read it in one of our last Rory Gilmore readathons and she loved it so there you go two very different opinions but it just wasn't for me and then of course The Snows of Kilimanjaro which was a really great finish to this reading experience. So with all of those books combined that meant that for the last 24 hours of being Rory Gilmore I read a total of three full novels, one short story and that made up to 654 pages which is certainly less pages than I would normally try to read in a Rory Gilmore readathon but I had actually just had the most lovely day that I really don't mind and I feel like the spirit of this readathon isn't about how many pages you read or how many books you finish it's just about putting some time into reading, dedicating a day to diving into some books and into a fictional world both in the sense of reading and just in the sense of transporting yourself into Stars Hollow which I absolutely did. So with that in mind I'm going to bring this lovely readathon to an end. I really hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these books and if you can't tell already I would just recommend for everyone to pick up The Kite Runner because it was incredible and also though I didn't read it in this readathon A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hosseini as well. Just 
amazing so so good so if you join me and carolyn for this read along i would love to know which books you picked up and whether you did any of the other fun gilmore girls prompts because i just think these readathons are so much fun and i have absolutely loved seeing all of you guys sharing your progress on instagram stories with us so thank you so so much for watching as i said i hope you enjoyed i'm going to spend the rest of my evening drinking tea and watching gilmore girls and i hope you have the coziest day ahead of you as well see you next time